Welcome to the life you crave. Simple and sustainable weight loss for women who have better things to do than diet. I'm your host, Leah Pinelli. I help ambitious, badass women stop overeating, overworking, and overgiving to lose weight from a place of love. I'll help you simplify weight loss, end your overwhelm, and create the life you crave. If you like what you hear, please like and subscribe to this podcast. Let's get started. Hello, my elevated homegirls, listeners of the Life You Crave podcast. You know, just the fact that you're listening to this podcast tells me that you are a woman with a mission. Even if you're not even totally clear what that mission is, or you feel like you're not really living your mission or your purpose, just the fact that you are tuned into a podcast that is all about having the courage and the confidence to create the life that you crave tells me so much about you. I just had, um, just this week, a woman who stumbled across my podcast, um, started listening, and then she booked a call with me. And I was so touched because she came to one of my free master classes, which by the way, I have got a master class coming up this month that I'll be sure to tell you about. She came to one of my master classes after she'd been listening to the podcast for a while. And then she booked a call with me just to tell me how much she loved the podcast and and to thank me, which I was very touched. But I was like, I wish more of you guys would do that. I wish more of you guys out there. I mean, I don't I didn't even know so many of you, but yet you're listening to me talk in your ear, in your, uh, you know, earbuds every week or so. And I would love to know you too. So if you're so inclined, I would love for you to head over to leahpinelli.com and click on contact and just let me know like who you are. Like, let's have a virtual coffee. Okay. Today's episode is all about weight gain. Big surprise. And I am I wanted to say, I'm excited to share with you. I'm excited probably isn't the right word. But today I am courageously sharing with you that I personally, Leah Pinelli, the woman who teaches women how to release unwanted weight for the last time, over the last year or so, I've had this five pounds creep on that just won't seem to go. It's this stubborn middle tire, as they call it, right? This spare tire, as they call it, around my hips. Now, I'm 45, and so I know that perimenopause is a thing. And I know that having five pounds of, you know, surprise weight gain, even though you're eating the same way and moving the same way, that that it happens, right? That this is part of our biochemistry. This is part of how our bodies change and evolve with time. But that doesn't mean that I like it, right? It it doesn't mean that I like this extra five pounds that's kind of hanging out in my in my torso. And of course, you know, over the last year, I've talked to my doctor about a hundred times, you know, saying, well, what could it be? What could it be? I swear nothing has changed. And really, not a lot has changed. I am still eating in the same ways, the same patterns that I've eaten for the last five, six years. I'm actually exercising more, although not more compared to the year before this last one, but more compared to how much I was exercising five, six years ago. So I, I've told my doctor, I don't get it. Now, the one thing that I have to I have to admit, to be fair, is that I am taking two medications daily over the last year that I wasn't taking before. But again, my doctor reassures me that those two medications shouldn't, she says, be the cause of a five pound stubborn weight gain. So of course, the fact that I help women to release unwanted weight has gotten me so curious about what is up, right? What's happening with my body? What is this, right? And I'm not gonna lie, there's been frustration there. There's been moments of frustration where I've had to really implement the the actual strategies and the advice that I give to my clients in order to um, talk myself off of the ledge, right? And some of you might be thinking, oh my God, Leah, it's only five pounds. And I get that. But the thing is, is it's not about the number. It's not about whether it's five pounds or 50 pounds. It's I don't feel at home in my skin. And so when somebody judges you because you don't feel at home in your skin, it doesn't matter. The weight, the number doesn't matter, right? The number doesn't matter. It's 
Do you feel at home in your skin? And if the answer to that is no, I don't, then it is so worth doing this work. So what I want to share with you today is the process that I have gone through over the last year or so. It's the same process that I take my clients through, except for I'm coaching myself. And to be fair, I do have my own coach. I do my own coaches, plural. So to be fair, I'm not trying to do this work on my own. And in fact, you really can't do this work on your own. It does take a village. It does take support. It does take community. But that is all available to me and it is available to you too. So in this podcast today, I'm going to take you through the process that I've gone through with this stubborn five pound weight gain so that you can implement it in your own life as well. I'm going to give you actual tools and and tips for how to kind of get to the root of what might be the cause of the weight gain. But I'm also going to share with you the surprising twist, the unconventional method that I've actually used to be at peace with my body, even as it goes through these changes that are potentially out of my control. So if that resonates with any of you listening, stay tuned. Let's dive in. So of course, I know that there could be a lot of things that are causing this five pounds of weight, right? So often five pounds of weight or even 10 pounds of weight, even 20 pounds of weight for some people, it's like It flies totally under the radar. We think we're eating in the same way that we've always eaten, but really we aren't. And so sometimes it takes a pretty close analysis. And this is where having a coach to step in and help you with that really reduces the amount of overwhelm or stress that that can involve. So I took myself through this process of just getting curious, right? Asking myself these questions. Okay, Leah, could it be stress, right? If I'm eating the same way I've always eaten, could it be stress? Now, we know that cortisol has an impact on either weight gain, according to some experts, and or most experts agree that it actually, it, if it, even if it doesn't directly cause, it's not causational, even if cortisol doesn't, cortisol, by the way, is the hormone that's released, that's the stress hormone. Even if cortisol doesn't cause weight gain, and again, the jury's out on that, there's not enough research, but even if it doesn't cause weight gain, we do know that if there's enough cortisol pumping through your blood, your body will not release weight. So you could be doing all the things, quote unquote, right, you know, eating a certain way and moving a certain way. But if your stress levels are particularly high for a prolonged period of time, that can definitely have an impact on your body's ability to drop weight. Well, I would say that I definitely had a pretty stressful year this last year and some parts of this year were stressful. But I'm actually in a better place than I've ever been now. So that part doesn't make total sense, right? And then I had to take a look at, am I, well, actually, before I take you through this process, let me back it up. Let me tell you what my brain was doing before I talked myself off the ledge. So after I'd asked my doctor about a hundred times, you know, what the heck could be going on? You know, let's test my, let's do a hormone test, blood test, you know, let's do all the things. And everything kept coming back normal. My brain started reeling, right, with with all of the possibilities that it could be. Is it stress? Is it that I'm drinking too much? Is it that I'm eating too much fruit, right? Which I, you know, whatever. Is it that, is it my daily yogurt habit? Is it that I'm eating too many nuts? And as I noticed my brain cycling through these thoughts day after day after day, because like I said, this five pounds came on over the course of a year, it hit me. Oh my God, it's happening again, even to me. Now, when I say it's happening again, you probably think that I mean weight gain and I don't. What I mean is, oh my God, it's happening again. My brain space is slowly, sneakily, insidiously getting sucked into the vortex of food and weight obsession all over five pounds. Now, again, I don't mean to diminish diminish the number, but what I started to notice was that all of that peace and freedom that I had had with food over the last five or six years was so slowly and sneakily escaping me. And I didn't even realize it was happening. And you guys, this is why. This, hear me on this. I don't care if it's me that you work with. I don't care if it's my community that you join, but this is what I care about you and your results. And if you are not in a community of support, this kind of insidious thinking will 
take over your brain again, right? Like it's like a virus. You don't even know it's there. And the next thing you know, you're spending all of this mental real estate that you could be spending on your career, your contribution, your relationships, your, you know, so many other things you could be doing with that brain space. But instead, we're busy looping about, could it be this? Could it be that? What am I doing wrong? Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should try that. Maybe I should do Zumba. Maybe I should, you know, like your brain just starts to go, 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 go. And the next thing I knew, I had gone from thinking about food maybe 10, 20% of the time. And that was just, you know, out of, you know, necessity and pleasure, like food exists, to all of a sudden it was starting to take over like 50, 60% of my brain space. And I was like, oh, hold up, sister. We are not doing this. We are not going back to being that person. So, and I, and I want to say, even if my brain space, it, even if it wasn't a full-blown obsession, it was still occupying more brain space than I would like. So I had to have a little come to Jesus, right, with myself. And I had to give myself that same advice and lean on my community of support, but to give me that same advice that I give my clients. And I'm going to share it with you today. So grab a pen and paper or grab that notes app in your phone because you're going to want to remember. There's just a couple of points here, but you're going to want to remember these steps. So the first step when you gain surprise weight, we'll just call it surprise. (laughs) Here it is and it's not going anywhere. Wait, is you want to ask yourself, what is your hunch? We usually have a hunch about what it could be what it might be. And usually with those, especially my clients, because my clients have like PhDs in weight loss. They've done all the diets. They've read all the books. They've done all the programs. They've drank all the shakes, right? They know so much. And so a lot of times they have a hunch about what it might be because they're so well-versed in this stuff. But then because of diet confusion, we tend to rationalize and talk ourselves out of that hunch, So I always say, go back to your first or second hunch. What do you think it might be? Well, for me, the first thing my brain always goes to is, okay, let's look at my relationship with wine, right? I am a wine drinker. I love good wine. I love enjoying a bottle of wine with my friends and my husband. And I had to admit that even though I feel like I'm not drinking any more frequently than I used to, I had to admit that there's a good chance that I might be drinking a little bit more frequently, right? Like I can't really remember what I was doing five, six years ago, um, but I do know that I may have been drinking only three, four nights a week, and now maybe I'm drinking five, six nights a week, right? Just a glass or two, but that steady increase over time can make a difference. Now, I want you to hear me. I'm not talking about a caloric difference. And in fact, I just involuntarily rolled my eyes when I said the word caloric. (laughs) I know a lot of you are like, oh yeah, those calories add up. No, they don't. I mean, yes, they do, but that is not what's causing the weight gain. What's causing the weight gain potentially with alcohol is when you consume alcohol, alcohol is a toxin. It is a, it is a talk. I mean, this isn't a judgment, but it is a toxin. It's a poison in our bodies. So what happens is is when you consume it, your liver has to prioritize, your body has to prioritize the processing through of that alcohol before it can do any other food digestion, processing, metabolizing, right? Because it has to get the toxin out. And so it essentially, you know, our beautiful, miraculous bodies are designed to, um, focus in on the the top priority. And so that's what happens. So if you're drinking alcohol every single night, um, your body might really struggle to release weight because it's so busy processing the wine, even if it's just a glass or two or that whatever your drink is, right? It doesn't have to be wine. It's just any kind of alcoholic beverage. Now, the other piece of that is I'm 45, right? Like this could for sure be hormonal perimenopausal thing. And even though I was able to drink wine, through my whole 30 pounds of weight loss without ever having to quote unquote give it up, it could be that the frequency with which I'm drinking it now is actually just having a five pound impact, right? Because my body's metabolism is changing and my um, my hormones are changing. I'm, I'm changing, right? Physiologically, changes are happening. So it could be that. I don't know. It could be that, right? So 
the way that we figure this out is when you have a hunch. Now, I had other hunches. I had a hunch that maybe I was overdoing it on my nuts. <laughs> ha ha ha. No jokes there. But I have definitely increased the amount of nuts I've been eating because of their nutritional value, because they're so convenient, and because I've reduced the amount of dairy that I've been having. And so nuts have become kind of a go-to for me. Could have been that. Um, it could have been all of those things that I mentioned. So how do you figure out which thing it is? I always teach my clients that you want to use, I teach my clients a method that's actually quite similar to the scientific method that we all learned in elementary school. Um, but it's a method of essentially eliminating one thing at a time, kind of like a, an elimination diet, except for elimination diets are awful and torturous because you eliminate all the things and then you bring back one thing at a time. I teach my clients to do the opposite, to take one thing out at a time and to see if that moves the needle. So of course, I've gone through my own process of experimenting with, okay, is it the wine? Is it the nuts? Is it the this? Is it the that? But here's what I want you to know. This is the most important part. When you are doing this kind of experimentation, you want to do it from a place of, I want you to put on a lab coat as if you are a scientist. I'm not kidding about this. I mean, I, I am being figurative, not literal. You don't have to go buy yourself a lab coat. But what I mean is I want you to approach it from the perspective of curiosity. Because when you think about a scientist, scientists are curious. They're curious about the cause and effect. They're curious about how things work, right? I want you to be a scientist with your own body, with your own metabolism, with your own patterns. And really say to yourself, okay, you know, let me see what happens. Let me just get curious. This isn't restriction. This is, trust me, in no way was I like, oh, I'm never going to drink wine again. So I'm going to cut it out now. Absolutely not. I'm totally not going to not drink wine again. <laughs> There's a double negative for you. Um, but for me, I was like, but I just want to know because there's empowerment in knowing. I just want to know, is it the wine? I just want to know, is it overdoing it on the nuts? I just want to know what it is so that I can make an informed and empowered decision about how frequently and how much of those particular foods I decide to continue to consume. But notice it's me deciding. This is not some diet. This isn't Weight Watchers telling me how many freaking points I can have. This isn't any of that. It's me just doing math. Okay, when I have this much wine and this many nuts, I weigh this amount. I have this extra spare tire around my tummy. Do I love that? No. Okay, so am I willing to change the equation? And that is ultimately the question that you are going to ask. So that brings me to my question number two that you want to ask yourself, which is, am I willing to let go? So if it was wine, which by the way, wine definitely, I have learned through this process, through my method of figuring it out, wine is definitely making an impact. It's not the only thing, but wine has an impact. And and my, my, my hunch is that it is a combination of wine and perimenopause. And so, you know, there it is. But the next question that you have to ask then, okay, then am I willing to let go of the culprit and for me in this instance, in this example, it would be wine. Am I willing to let go of the culprit in order to potentially lose this weight? And for me, that would be five pounds. So am I willing to not drink wine anymore and not drink alcohol anymore so that I can lose five pounds? And if you know me, you know very well that the answer to that question was a resounding, hell no, I am not willing to not drink wine uh, for five pounds. No, thank you, sister. But I have to admit to you guys, and I know so many of you are going to resonate with this, that there was this part of me, this very loud part of me in my brain that was basically protesting. It was like, this isn't fair. I was able to drink wine and maintain my weight for years up until now. Like, what happened? This isn't fair. This isn't right. And the truth is, is when we have those thoughts, this isn't fair. There has to be another way. What ends up happening is we keep thinking about it. We keep thinking and doing and thinking and doing and thinking and doing, right? We're like, oh, maybe I'll try this, maybe I'll try that, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do that. And that, the result of that is a devastating loss to your precious mental real estate. Because that's how our brains get sucked in to thinking about food and weight 70, 80, 90% of the time. 
some of us maybe even more. My brain space, I decided a long time ago that my brain space is reserved and it's reserved for making an impact, making a contribution and for empowering myself and other women and girls. It is my brain space is not for agonizing over food or weight or even the changes that my body is making over time. But what I want you to know is that doesn't mean that I just have to suck it up either, right? Like, I don't have to just suck this up. I don't just have to, oh, well, you know, like, guess I'm just going to have this spare tire on my waist. I'm going to go drink a bottle of wine now, (laughs) right? Like, that doesn't really feel good either. That doesn't feel good at all. So this is where we move into the second phase. And I actually, I was just on a call with another woman today um, who uh, is phenomenal. And she is literally doing everything, quote unquote, right. And what I mean by that is she's eating a nearly ketogenic diet. Um, She calls it a modified ketogenic diet, but she loves it. She eats a kind of Mediterranean-based keto-ish diet that she really loves. And to me, it's like, I don't care if you're doing keto or Weight Watchers or if you're not dieting at all. I just care that you love what you're eating. That's all that matters. So she kind of does that and she's active and she's healthy and she takes supplements and she almost never has sugar or occasionally has a glass of wine. I mean, like a way, way better, better, again, I'm saying this in quotes, but a way better diet than I'm eating. And yet she's struggling with about 50 pounds. And what we talked about today is exactly what I am leading you into with this next part of the podcast, which is when you, when you have actually done the, you know, the, the method that I teach or for, for our purposes on the podcast, the scientific method, right, of creating the hypothesis and then testing it out and collecting data. When you've actually done that, the same the same steps that I did, like I said, with the alcohol and the nuts, when you've actually done that and you figured out, oh, OK, so me drinking wine a few nights a week, you know, or maybe several nights a week is going to result in me weighing X amount. So we can say, you know, uh, if we said seven to 10 glasses of wine a week plus perimenopause equals <laughs> and then my weight, right? Like it's literally an equation. So when you finally have figured out the equation, you're like, okay, this is just what it is. Then the next thing that you have to ask yourself is, am I willing to change the equation, right? Am I willing to change the equation? Am I willing to, well, I don't have a choice about perimenopause, right? Am I willing to stop drinking the wine? I already told you the answer is a resounding hell no. So if I'm not willing to change the equation, then there's only one thing left to do. I can either be miserable and complain and not love my body as much because I am carrying this extra five pounds around my hips. So I can decide to ruminate on it and tell people how much I hate it and how much it sucks and how much I'm, I can do all that, right? Really placing myself in, in the position of being victimized by my body. And I really want you to hear me because so many of us feel victimized and betrayed by our bodies, right? Like, and, and I did too for a minute there. I was like, this isn't fair. <laughs> I'm eating all these great foods and I'm super healthy and I don't overeat and I exercise and I go to Pilates and I walk my dog. I shouldn't have an extra five pounds, right? It's like a little kid having a tantrum. And I was playing the victim role with my body. And we, here is, here is the thing I want you to walk away with on this podcast today. I want you to walk away with knowing that that is a choice. That it is a choice to feel victimized by your body. It is a choice to say A plus B shouldn't equal C, but it does. And I'm angry about it. You can stay there for as long as you want, sister. You really can. If, but here's what I want you to know. It's not serving you. There's no upside to victimization. There's no upside to being pissed off about math, right? About A plus B equaling C. There's no upside to that. So what you have the capacity to do is what I have the capacity to do. And what I have, I want to say it's what I've done, but to be totally, totally transparent, it's what I'm still working on. And I will continue to work on this because this is my new work in this body of a 45-year-old perimenopausal superfly woman. (laughs) This is my new work. And that work is to shift my narrative, to shift my narrative from one of misery and victimization to one of curiosity, one of love, and most importantly, one of empowerment. 
So instead of, this isn't fair, I hate these stubborn five pounds, I can actually choose to think, I treat my body with sacred reverence. I nourish myself with the healthiest of foods, and I am grateful for all that my beautiful body does for me. I can choose that thought. Now, here's what I want you to know, though. Super, super, super important caveat here. So listen up. You can only say this. You, th- that, that new narrative is only going to work if it's actually true. So repeating affirmations that you don't really believe just for the sake of repeating them, like people say, oh, go look in the mirror and say, I love myself, I love myself, right? Like that actually can be counterproductive if there isn't a part of you that believes that thought. And the one thing that I really want you to know is that these affirmations that I tell myself when I'm flipping from this isn't fair to I treat my body with sacred reverence, I nourish myself with the healthiest of foods, and I'm grateful for all that my beautiful body does for me. The only reason that that works is because A, there is a part of me that believes that, but also B, saying those affirmations and even believing it would never be enough if my actual eating patterns and behaviors weren't aligned and under control with that, right? So if I was actually still overeating or if I was still binging on junk food or binging on booze or whatever it is, there there wouldn't be a part of me that believes that, that, that new thought. So it's super important that you find, that you change the narrative. Can you guys hear my dog freaking out in the background? (laughs) It is super important that you change your narrative, but you have to change your narrative to one, it doesn't have to be like the flip side of this, right? Like, I hate my body. We don't want to flip it right away to, oh, I love my body, right? That's too big of a leap for your brain. But instead, you want to nudge it in the direction. So instead of I hate my body, maybe it becomes I have a body, right? I hate this perimenopausal body. Maybe shifts to I'm so grateful that I get to live another day, right? I'm so grateful that I get to spend another day holding hands with my, you know, my partner or my grandkids or whatever it is. It's, it's shifting what you are choosing to pay attention to because what you choose to pay attention to is what creates your thoughts and your thoughts create your reality. So I want to make it really clear, you guys, that the reason that this affirmation works for me is because I do love the way that I eat. I, I treat myself so well with food. I have elevated my self-image so that I'm always nourishing myself really, really well. I almost never overeat. I eat mostly whole foods and I don't spend, I refuse to spend my precious mental real estate thinking about food or counting calories or carbs. And I love, love eating this way. So if you love how you're eating and are unwilling to change it and your weight is higher than you'd like, you're just like me. You've got two options. You can either choose to move into restriction and deprivation to try to quote unquote solve the problem, which is you changing the equation, or you can change the narrative. And I really want to invite you that if this is the case, if you really love how you're eating and you don't love the weight you're weighing, I want you to just to to invite you to change the narrative because you really do have better things to do than diet. And if you don't like your eating behaviors, if you're someone who's like, no, Leah, and this used to be me. I, 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 I was an overeater. I knew I was overeating. I hated it. I had a little sugar habit slash addiction. I, I, I hated my relationship with food. And if, you, if that's you or if that's a part of you, then we need to chat because I can help you with that part. In fact, helping women eat in a way that feels like love is kind of my superpower. So head over to leahpinelli.com and book a call with me. Just click on contact or work with me and um, we'll hop on a call. And honestly, we're going to do three things on this call. If you get on a call with me, I want to learn what it is that you're struggling with because everybody's struggle is unique. Um, And then the second thing we're going to do is I'm going to help you get really, really clear really clear on what you want and your pathway to get there. And then the third thing that we're going to do on that call is I'm going, to, the most important thing we do on a call is I want you to make an empowered decision. It's not about getting you to work with me. It's not about getting you to sign up for anything. It's truly about my entire mission is helping women make empowered decisions, especially when it comes to their bodies and their self-image. So that's what I'm here for you. I will see you on the next episode. 
You've been listening to The Life You Crave. I lost 30 pounds years ago without dieting, willpower, or deprivation. I'm on a mission to help other women, including you, do the same. You can book a free weight loss strategy session with me over at leahpinelli.com. That's L-I-A-P-I-N-E-L-L-I.com. See you on our next call or on the next episode. And remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment on iTunes. Thank mm-hmm. you.